Hello there, my stitching friends. Um, I'm working at the moment on some borrow or borrow work, which is a Japanese technique. It's it's borrow inspired, not true borrow, because that would be um, patched and patched clothing over again. But I've made this from scratch, really. But it but it's borrow inspired, and the stitch you use is a, a Sashko um, stitch. I'm using um, a nice thick thread. This one is, um, it happens to be an orophil and it's a wool one, but you can use Sashko thread or some other thick threads that, that complement the um, the fabrics you're using. It's, for this, I'm using some woven fabrics. Um, I have got a little bit of brushed cotton there, but these are more of a woven fabric with a, with a little bit of an opener weave you to work with and basically the piece I'm working on is 18 by 12 and you need a, a base to put it all on um, I, I happen to use a lot of Osnaburg which is a fairly open weave and makes a nice background so I've I put mine onto um, Osnaburg fabric so I've cut out a lot of pieces of this fabric some of them like two by one, three by two, some square, some oblongs. Just a selection. And I cut three or four of each fabric, but perhaps in different sizes. And you need to build them up onto your background. So I generally start in the middle. And you want them to overlap. Um, it's all raw edges, overlapping by about two centimetres, meters, which is about... Uh, three quarters of an inch so just that one may be a bit too similar to go there I might put something like that on there so you're just building up and it doesn't matter really what goes where at this point and you're just overlapping Oops. I'm trying to get a little I might put that one up there Something different. I got a nice long piece here. Perhaps I'll put that there and maybe this one here. And you just slowly build it up until you've covered your fabric with these little pieces. And then what I did was I went away, had a cup of tea come back a little while later to decide if I like the layout. If anything jumped out at me, I moved it round. But you're basically just playing around with fabrics, lying them down. Whoops, can't put that one there, it's the same. There we go. So I've got a few bits laid down there. Once you'd laid them down, you would then pin them. onto the background so just one pin in each one onto the background once you are happy with them so you just need to put lots of pins in once you've pinned it you'd need to tack it then to hold it in place now I also did use um, a fabric glue or a glue stick just to glue down some of the corners to make it a little bit easier so any loose corners I just put a dab of glue on and then I, I stitched on my sewing machine with a longer stitch I'll show you on the other piece to tack it basically into place while I in preparation for the hand sewing so there's a line there, line there, line there so they're about an inch inch and a half apart with a long stitch you could hand tack them as well so they're all sort of in place but they're all loose as you can see up here these are still loose right and the edges will fray but that's all part of this work and then I got, um, I like to use uh, soap, dried soap as a marker. So I've, I've used some dry soap and a ruler. And I've marked just a few lines at the time. I marked them, not being overly fussy. I haven't really measured them. I've just marked these lines. You can see a line there, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna stitch. It's just a running stitch, 
happen is you could just go in through two layers. Some of the stitching I've done, a lot of the stitching like in one direction. Sometimes I've decided to sort of put it in a different direction just for a bit of visual contrast. Uh, you can go back over the straight lines the other way to make little crosses and that's about as complicated as it gets. So I'm just going to pick up this work now. And it's um, a sash go needle or um, a chenille needle works quite well for these kind of fabrics. It'll depend on your fabrics. So you're just going to go in and out. It's a running stitch and it really doesn't matter. Although it's technically a sashko stitch, it's not as precise as um, with sashko. It's very geomet geometrical and you sort of want all your... Um, stitches to be the same size but when I've done research on um, this borrow work it's much more free flowing so you're just going to go along taking a few stitches at a time and it, it should go through you know you've got the right needle when it goes through quite easily and out in and out in and out and then pull through you could start off with two or three stitches and work your way up. I'm using really the um, the fabric. I'm I'm holding the fabric and almost pushing the fabric back and forth onto the needle. That's the way I tend to do it. Now let's say that I would had decided now I wanted to make some of those X's along here. I would simply start doing that little running stitch in the other direction just going back and forth over can you see that there and when you're doing the the lines they don't need to be um the stitches on top of each other or apart they just random so i could do that and come back down the other side then I make myself a little part, part that's got all crosses on. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. In preparation, I'm making this piece now. In preparation, I'm going to make a bag, a borrow inspired bag. So I just wanted to show you uh, how I was working. Hope you found it a bit interesting. Bye.